Hi everyone, I'm Katie from A Natter About Books uh, and today I wanted to show you all of the books that I read in January. Uh, so I set myself a little bit of a challenge after having a pretty appalling reading year um, back in 2020 and I wanted to try and read 31 books in January, so a book every day. Now that was not an easy feat, I tell you. Um, so today I want to go through all of the books that I read with you. Some of them, I have to say, I've already forgotten because of the amount that I've read. Um, and some of them are actually quite short. I'm not doing this in any order at all, by the way. This isn't the order that I read them in. This isn't even ordered by genre. I've just got two piles of books there that I'm just going to pull from uh, and go through the books that I've read. Um, so the first one that I have here is Weather by Jenny Oppel. Uh, this was um, one that I actually picked up in January and decided to also read in January. There aren't many in the list, I promise, that I, I bought this month. A lot of these are TBRs, uh, TBR reads, which is great. Um, so this one is all to do with um, a librarian who basically advises people around her um, on different aspects of their life. They come to her and ask for advice um, and it's also very current. So. Uh, there is quite a lot about recent politics in here, um, no mention of coronavirus, which is quite nice, uh, but it does brilliantly evade the use of Donald Trump's name, um, which I quite enjoyed. Uh, it's very, quite, quite short, as you can tell, um, and also written in uh, little chunks like this, so quite quick and easy to get through. Um, definitely one that I think I will reread at some point because I think the more that you read this, the more you can get out of it. So I really did enjoy this. Then we have How To Be Famous by Catla Moran. Can you tell how much I paid for this? Um, this uh, is the second novel in the How To Build A Girl series. I read that I think three, four, maybe even five years ago now. Um, and it was really nice to pick this back up and get back involved with the life of Johanna um, and her sort of musical writing career um, and uh, and I really did enjoy this. I've loved Catelyn Moran um, for years uh, and I think there's only two of her books that I haven't read. Um, one is her most recent and then the other one is uh, Moranifesto I think uh, and I have, I have Moranifesto on my shelf so that's definitely one that I want to get through uh, soon but I really did enjoy this. Would recommend. Next we have Vinegar Girl by Anne Tyler. This one is in the Hogarth Shakespeare collection um, which was from a year, few years ago. Uh, this is my first ever Anne Tyler. I know that she's quite a popular author um, and I definitely am inspired to pick up her other works off the back of this. Uh, this is about um, a young woman called Kate uh, and her father is a scientist who has um, a, a laboratory assistant uh, who comes to join him from, where's he from? Can't remember in the blurb, doesn't say. Um, but he needs uh, a visa to be able to stay in the country uh, and that is due to expire. Um, so Piotr, the uh, lab assistant, and Kate actually end up um, getting married at the wishes of her father to be able to keep Piotr in the country. Um, I listened to this on audiobook, it was actually really quite nice to listen to. Um, I don't know whether I would have finished this if I was physically reading it, but like in parts it got a little bit um, probably boring I think it's safe to say, um, but there were some elements that were actually quite nice. This is quite a battered dog-eared copy as well, so I would probably have been a bit sad whenever I picked it up so <laughs> so that's something else as well. Sorry I had to quickly pause there because uh, the doorbell went. Um, so I was just mentioning Sincerity by Caroline Duffy. So I have um, read two I think of Caroline Duffy's previous poetry collections. This is her most recent. Uh, I think this came out um, at the end of 2019. Could be wrong. Um, Could have been the end of 2018. Um, I really did enjoy this. Um, not my favourite of the ones that I have read though. I actually did pick up another one of her poetry collections this month which I much preferred. Um, this one I found a little bit forgettable. I often get that way with poetry though. Um, I do enjoy reading poetry. I just need to make sure that I'm properly, properly paying attention. Um, and, uh, and yeah, this one was okay. Not my favourite but still very good. 
Next is Love in Colour by Bolly Babalola. This has been making the rounds on booktube so I won't bore you too much with it but something that this reminded me of um, is for those of you that might have read any fan fiction in your lives. Um, this, even though it's probably uh, not the nicest thing to say about a novel, but I really loved this because it reminded me so much of the fan fiction um, that I uh, I did used to read when I was younger. So um, so I read I really did enjoy this. Uh, it's all to do with um, mythical tales uh, from around the world and. Um, how these these people fall in love so there are things like Greek gods in here um but it's all in modern day well predominantly in modern day um so there are things like uh, two people that work in a company and uh, and how they fall in love um there is only i think one queer um queer story in here so uh i think the only thing that would have made this a little bit better for me is if there were a little bit more of those um but i did really enjoy this um and uh and i've heard really great things about the audiobook as well so that might be one that i pick up and do a little bit of a reread of later in the year or maybe early next year but i did really enjoy this next is red at the bone by jacqueline woodson i really enjoyed this this was one of the shorter reads as you can tell um and another one that i did actually pick up in january so i tell a lie earlier this one and weather um i bought this month oops um but i did really like this so this tells a story about 18 pregnancy and how that then affects um the two families uh, and the generations before um there were a couple of narratives in this that I really enjoyed. So the um, the partner of the young woman that gets pregnant, I really enjoyed his storyline in this. Um, and uh, and there's a bit of a corker twist at the end, and and I did really enjoy that as well, um, even though it was a bit sad. So uh, mini spoiler there, but I really did like this. Next was Finding Chica by Mitch Album. Uh, this one was lovely to read. Um, I have always been a bit of a sucker for Mitch Album's books. Um, the Five People That You Meet in Heaven was one of my favourite books of all time uh, and I know that people read them when they're slightly younger um, but I did really enjoy that and uh, as such I think I've read everything that Mitch Album has ever written. Um, now this is no exception, I did really enjoy this as well. Uh, this is a non-fiction, um, quite similar to Tuesday with Morris if you've ever read that, um, which is around his, uh, his previous teacher. This one is about how Mitch and his wife run uh, a child orphanage in Haiti um, after the crisis and it's about them meeting a young a uh, girl called Chica who is brought into the orphanage um, by her aunt I think and uh, and how the the story kind of evolves from there. Chica does have a uh, terminal illness um, so it's about how they tried everything that they could to help Chica um, and brought her over to the states and everything so it was a really lovely read quite heartbreaking um, towards the end it says that she has a terminal illness in the blurb so hopefully that wasn't too much of a spoiler but I did really enjoy this, I, I love Mitch Album. Next we have Ghosts by Dolly Alderton. I have never read um, uh, Everything I Know About Love which I think is her first um, non-fiction. This one is uh, obviously a fiction, not sure if this is her first fiction or not um, but I really like this, I listened to it on audiobook uh, and it obviously follows the story of um, a 30-something woman who is getting back on the dating scene um, after a few years of, of not seeing anyone. Um, before that she was in a long-term relationship and this is all about how she tries online dating, uh, meets someone who then ghosts her and the story kind of goes on from there. Um, I would recommend listening to this on audiobook, I really like the narrator on there. Um, I actually use my library app um, rather than Audible for this, but I imagine it's the same narrator if, uh, if you go on there as well. So really did like this, would recommend. Next we have Summer Water by Sarah Moss. I have read and loved um, The Ghost Wall and also The Tidal Zone by Sarah Moss. Um, and this is probably my favourite out of the three that I have read by her. Um, so Summer Water focuses on uh, a group of people, 
um, well, lots of different groups of people and families and couples who are currently staying in cabins in Scotland. Um, and uh, it kind of every chapter focuses on different family or people that are staying in these cabins uh, and every story cleverly links slightly uh, in a subtle way with the next um, so I, I did really enjoy this uh, I thought it was a lovely um, lovely story there were elements of it that got quite dark I think there was quite a raunchy one in here as well um, but I did really enjoy this so if you've got this and you haven't read it yet or you or you are thinking about picking it up I would strongly recommend I loved it Next we have the Bass Rock by Evie Wilde. This one is definitely uh, well loved on booktube. I think this came in the top five of most people's books of 2020 uh, so I definitely wanted to get to this um, quite early on in this year so I took full advantage of reading uh, all of my books in January and I thought this will be one of the ones that I will love. I was not wrong, I did very much enjoy this. Um, I listened to it on audio audiobook which I don't think I would do again. I think I missed a trick not reading the physical version. I don't know if anyone else um, who's listened to it would agree. I think that the narrators, even though they were brilliant, were um, it got quite difficult to follow the story in parts. Um, it took me quite a while to, to get to the point of really understanding what each storyline was about and also how it connected. So this one was one that I was reading uh, whilst trying to get my 10,000 steps in every day on my normal January health kick so that was um, a little bit different for me but I, I did really enjoy this. Um, definitely one that I think I would love to read the physical copy of so just bear that in mind if uh, you do think of picking this up anytime soon. Next is The Dumb House by John Burnside. I picked this one up because I had heard uh, Jen Campbell rave about this um, I think it was a few years ago now in one of her favourite books videos um, and I have to say that the first line on this gripped me um, and made me really want to pick it up so I definitely knew that this one was one of my January reads. Um, so the first line says no one could say it was my choice to kill the twins any more than it was my decision to bring them into the world so it immediately makes you go oh well he's had two children twins and he kills them why what happened what's going on there and it immediately makes you want to read it so i uh, i did really enjoy this i'm not going to spoil it um but i thought it was creepy uh, and thrilling in different places as well so i would definitely recommend this if you haven't already read it loved it next we have girl meets boy by ali smith this one was probably one of my least favorites of the month um i love ali smith i've read all of i think you can see the seasonal uh, quartet over there. I, I love them. Public Libraries is another one of my favourites by her. Um, this one, as I said, not one of my favourites. It centres around um, two sisters, one of which discovers that they are um, they are a lesbian and it's basically how the other sister deals with her becoming a lesbian. You kind of get the perspective of the, um, the lesbian sister as well but I just thought it was a bit meh. To be honest, I didn't didn't love it, didn't hate it. I was just reading it and thought, yeah, it's all right. Um, not one that I think I'll ever go back to in a hurry. Probably one that I will uh, give to a charity shop, which is exactly where I found this one. Next, we have Bluettes by Maggie Nelson. Um, obviously, Maggie Nelson has re uh, written several um, really well-known books here uh, on BookTube anyway. Um, and this one is no exception. This was making the rounds a few years ago uh, and I'd never gotten around to actually picking it up until now. So I thought um, this would be a great opportunity because it's short. Um, so when I picked this up, um, I did enjoy it. It's basically an homage to everything blue um, and some fun facts are thrown in there as well. There are, I think, a couple of raunchy paragraphs too. Um, but it's actually really nice, uh, nice read. Um, and like I said, it, it can be done in a very, very short sitting because it is so, so short. I have previously read um, The Red Parts by Maggie, Nel Maggie Nelson, which I did prefer um, to Bluettes. It's slightly different. I think it follows a trial. So I would probably recommend that over this. This was still good, uh, but not my favourite. Next, we have Ella Minow P uh, by Mark Dunn. This one, I actually saw a booktube review 
a couple of years ago on how this was someone's favourite book. I can't quite remember who that was, um, but it was someone's favourite book of all time. And I saw it in a charity shop a year or so ago and I thought, you know what, I'll pick it up and one day I'll get around to reading it. Um, well, January 2021 was, was the day, <laughs> the month. Um, this one actually is really fascinating. Um, and I really enjoyed the concept of this. So this is based um, in an island off the coast of America and um, it's all centered around the founder of the island statue, um, which is, as you imagine, right in the right in the center. Um, and it's actually surrounded by the letters of the alphabet on tiles. Now one day, one of the letters falls and the council decides that it is um, the, the founder speaking to them and they decide to outlaw that letter. So this is an epistolary novel um, sent in letters primarily from Ella, uh, who's the key protagonist, um, and her cousin, uh, who, is, who is another protagonist. And uh, it's all really interesting to see the, the letters sent to one another, how you can see the alphabetical letters drop out of them. So for example, towards the end of the novel, uh, where every chapter you get a reminder of the letters that have fallen. Um, and uh, and yeah, it's, it's really great. Uh, so obviously the more that the novel goes on, the more letters that are no longer able to be used and then the letters get shorter and shorter and it's, uh, it's uh, very, very good. I really did enjoy this one. Different, but good. Next, we have Braised Pork by Anne Yu. Um, this one uh, is centered in Beijing around a woman that finds her husband drowned in her bathtub. Uh, immediately drew me in when I saw this in the shop. I thought, yes, I will give it a try. Um, so this one was very strange, quite fantastical. Um, at the very start of the book, you discover that um, her husband actually drew a very strange picture of half man, half fish. Um, and she then goes through and tries to discover why he drowned himself and what this picture has to do with anything. Um, so very strange. I have to say I preferred the start than I did the finish. Um, and I think it gradually got a little bit, um, well, it got more whimsical, but also just very strange. And it wasn't really for me. Uh, but if you like that sort of thing, then definitely give it a go. Um, I did enjoy it, it was just odd. Next we have quite a boring one. We've got The uh, the Chimp Paradox by Professor Stephen, Professor Stephen Peters, get my words out. Um, this is uh, well, basically a model that you can read about um, which categorizes your brain into different areas. So you have the chimp, which is unruly. So if someone steps on your toe, you'll, uh, you immediately want to shout at them and Call them horrible names potentially. Um, that would be your chimp reacting uh, and then your human is actually what tries to repress those thoughts and feelings and how it comes out and it's all about how the chimp and the human kind of battle it out um, and how you can control your chimp. So this is really good when it comes to things like how how you can learn to deal with stress um, and uh, and actually management within the workplace as well. I think this is really handy for. This was recommended to me by a colleague. So uh, uh, so yes, I actually started this last year, got halfway through and then put it down. So I thought this would be the ideal time to actually finish it. So I did, um, and it was very good if, if you like that sort of thing. Next, we have The World's Wife by Caroline Duffy. Uh, so this one is the second poetry collection that I read this month by Caroline Duffy. And I love this one. This one is definitely the favorite one that I have ever read um, by Caroline Duffy. Uh, they're, they're, it's based all around the famous women behind men um, or uh, or just famous women full stop to be honest. Some of them aren't real as well. So for example, there is a poem called Elvis's Twin Sister, which unless I've missed something, I didn't realize that he had one. So I think that one's made up. Um, but I just wanted to read my personal favorite in here, which is Mrs. Darwin, which is the shortest one, but definitely stuck in my mind. Um, and uh, this is how you can get the gist of how this poetry collection goes. Mrs. Darwin, 7th of April, 1852, went to the zoo. I said to him, something about that chimpanzee over there reminds me of you. I loved it. Then we have Helen Fielding's Bridget Jones's Diary, The Edge of Reason, um, obviously a follow up to the classic Bridget Jones, um, Bridget Jones's Diary, which I read 
uh, in January last year. So I thought, why not keep up with the tradition, do do the next one. Um, I really love this, obviously. I love a bit of Bridget Jones, but <laughs> I didn't realise how different this was uh, to the film. I was kind of expecting to just read along to everything that happened. Obviously books are different to films, but this is completely different. Uh, I think I probably enjoyed it more because it was so different. Uh, I've seen Bridget Jones's Diary, the second film, at least 10 times in my life. Um, so I, I enjoyed this because it was so different to it. It's like a brand new story for Bridget Jones, um, which was good. So uh, I did really enjoy this. I watched it back to back with the films as well, which my partner uh, was not thrilled about. Then I read Motherhood by Sheila Hetty. Um, so this one, I feel like I didn't really get as much out of it as I could have and that might be partly again because I listened to this on audiobook. Um, I did enjoy it, I felt like uh, there were elements of it that I didn't love. Um, so for example, uh, this is all about a young woman who's contemplating the idea of motherhood, whether she wants to be a mother, whether the knock-on effects of her relationship with her mother has Drive, driven her to not want to have children um, and whether or not she should have them with her current partner as well. Um, so the concept really gripped me, I was really excited about it uh, but I just think that there were some elements of it that I just didn't enjoy um, so her relationship with her partner I really didn't get on with. Um, I hated him as a character to be perfectly honest uh, so that for me didn't really, um, didn't make me want to keep picking this up. I did finish it of course but I just didn't didn't really love it um, as much as I've seen so many other people love it so I don't know if I missed something but it just wasn't really for me. Next we have The Small Hand by Susan Hill. Um, so this one uh, was a classic Susan Hill um, thriller. It was obviously very dark, um, had very similar vibes to The Women in Black which I've read before. Um, it's quite strange, centred around a man who uh, is trying to get some directions because he's lost so he drives up to um, an old house, uh, well, an old mansion really, and whilst he's there um, looking around for someone to ask for directions he is actually um, touched by a small hand uh, and the story kind of goes on from there and you wonder who this hand belongs to um, and why it's touched him specifically. So. A weird one, very Susan Hill-esque I would say. <laughs> um, it was nice, short and sweet to be honest so that's why I picked it up but it was quite good. Um, if you do like Susan Hill thrillers I would definitely recommend it. Um, but yeah. Next we have my lovely signed uh, signed by the author edition of Homebody which my uh, my partner gave to me at Christmas time. Um, so this one is uh, another poetry collection by Weepy Core. You might have already read Milk and Honey or The Sun and Other Flowers or something like that um, that she has written before. This one is very similar uh, in the way that it's presented. You've got a mix of very short um, short stories with illustrations that she's drawn herself as well um, and I did really enjoy this. I think there were sections on the mind, the body, um, being asleep or restfulness and being awake um, so it, it splits it in, into different sections uh, and I did really enjoy that. Um, because they are so short I always find that I can read them very quickly which is brilliant but um, in the same respect, I feel like it's one that you can easily reread and get more from it. Um, at the start, I would definitely be wary of, of trigger warnings, um, things like child abuse in there. Um, but but yeah, the, the, it's, it can get quite dark in places, but I did really enjoy this. I wonder how many times I've said that I really enjoy things in, in this um, video. This is my first ever one, so really, who knows. Um, the next one that I read is uh, Memento Mori by Muriel Spark. This is my first ever Muriel Spark and I loved it. I really, really did enjoy this. Um, there you go, I said it again. Uh, this one is centred around a group of, um, group of old people really, um, and it's about how they, one of them starts receiving phone calls saying that they are about to die. Uh, and telling them that they're about to die and then the rest of the group gradually starts getting these phone calls as well um, and you focus on um, a main character and it's all about how uh, how they try and get 
try and get to the bottom of exactly who is calling them and why they're calling them uh, and they hire um, well they go to the police they hire private detectives they go to the newspaper as well it's really really uh, a good romp I, I definitely enjoyed this next we have heartburn by Nora Ephron uh, you might have noticed these two um, are Virago modern classics I love these they're beautiful uh, and they come with very pretty uh, French flaps as well on the inside love it um, so this is Heartburn by Nora Ephron. Uh, obviously Nora Ephron is a questionable um, author in, in some places. Um, I have read, I think, an, another one of her um, stories before and they're, they're always very linked to her life. Um, so this one I think is, is a reflection on things that have actually happened to her in real life. Um, it's all about a young woman whose husband cheats on her with another woman um, in their friendship group kind of thing and um, and it's about how she bounces back from that she's actually seven months pregnant at the time as well so really it's all about what she's going to do whether she'll stay with him whether he wants to stay with her um, and uh, and it goes from there so uh, yeah that there were elements of this that were very of its time as well which is another kind of downside of this um but there you go so there there were elements of this that I did actually enjoy I like the story um but I just didn't really like certain elements of it next we have British Museum by Daljeet Nagra I probably butchered that sorry um so this one is a poetry collection that I actually stole from my partner shelves um and it's all about a uh, Sikh man and his relationship with Britain and how he lives um lives in Britain and, and when his parents emigrated over um, so I, I really did get something from this I feel I feel like there is so much more I could have gotten from this so again it's a poetry collection so I always need to reread them anyway to get the most out of them um, but I also found that the clash of cultures obviously made me feel like I needed to to sit down and research a little bit more around this. Um, my partner is Sikh, so I have uh, basically Google next to me when it comes to that, but I, I did really enjoy this. Um, there were some poems in here that were just beautiful. The, the first one especially, um, I, I really loved it. It was Father of Only Daughters. Um, so I would definitely recommend uh, even just giving that one a Google um, if you wanted to read that and see if the style is right for you. Um, some of them were very long poems uh, and I always found that the, the longer that they are the more I kind of struggle with them especially when it references things that I don't quite understand um, and then I feel like I need to spend 20 minutes googling exactly what it's about to really get the value of that one sentence. Um, so something that I would definitely love to revisit and I would definitely like to see more of his work. Um, but I think I would have digested this much better if it was, say, in, in a novel format. So, yeah, I did really enjoy this, though. Next, we have my half-price copy of Girl, Woman, Other uh, by Bernadine Everisto. I'm not going to talk too much about this because everyone and their dogs have read it, apparently. Um, but this one I uh, I did love. I listened to it on audiobook, which I would 100% recommend. Um, if you've read it and, and you think you want to reread it, try, try the audiobook because... I just thought that it captured all of the different people so well, all of the different women so well, sorry. Um, and uh, and yeah, this focuses on women, uh, mostly black women throughout many generations and uh, and yeah, and how they link as well. I love that. I love it when stories link. Um, but this actually kind of ends up reading a little bit like a novel as well, so I, I just absolutely adored it. Um, and yeah, would definitely recommend. Uh, and lastly, out of my physical copies, we have The Mars Room by Rachel Kushner. Um, this one I actually tried to read a couple of years ago when I first bought it, and I couldn't get on with it at all. Um, the concept really thrilled me. It's about a woman that has gone to prison uh, in America, and it's all about how she got there, and, and kind of reminded me a little bit of Orange is the New Black, to be as, uh, as typical as possible there, but... But that's why I was so excited to pick this up because I absolutely love that uh, and I thought that this would be 100% up my street. You do learn a little bit about the other prisoners that are with her and some of the people that actually got her into the position as well that she's in. Um, and yeah, I, I think it was quite a, a heartbreaking tale in some places um, but it also had moments of quite a lot of humour too. Um, I listened to this on audiobook and I would definitely recommend that as well because like I said, I didn't get on with the style of this, um, but listening to it, I actually got over it quite quickly. Um, 
this one I, I do have to say I don't know if I would remember everything that happened in say a year's time um, and I don't know whether I would ever probably pick it up again it was okay not not one of my favorites but also not, like there wasn't anything bad about it I just didn't really gel with me that's all um, so yeah so next we have I think five um, books that I read uh, well I listened to it on audiobook or read as an ebook so I don't actually have the physical copy but I will put a picture on screen here um, so the first one I'm just looking at my phone. The first one was Lift Off from the Classroom to the Stars by Donovan Livingston. Um, now this is another poetry collection. It was very short. I think it was probably the shortest one that I did read uh, and I read this in ebook format on my library app. Um, I had never heard of this before. Lucky on Goodreads that there weren't, weren't many reviews either um, but it was centred around um, linking what he has learnt as a teacher to um, constellations in the sky and, and stars and things like that. It was lovely, it was a very light-hearted read. Um, I probably wouldn't read it again, but it, it was very nice to, uh, to go through. So there's that. Next was Don't Touch My Hair by Emma Dabiri. Um, I listened to this, I started listening to it back in the summer of last year. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I felt like it was very accessible for someone that hasn't really been exposed to black women's hair and, and how that was managed and how, how that still is managed. Um, so I feel like there were elements of it that would have completely gone over my head unless Emma explained it in as much detail as she did. Um, so I, I really did enjoy it. I thought it was really valuable to, to listen to um, a woman that knows completely what she's talking about talk about black women's hair. Um, and also I didn't realise how much went into things like straightening, um, just straightening hair, uh, the oppression these women have faced in different times in their lives, so uh, I really did enjoy that. Um, I also listened to, um, this is kind of a cheat, a BBC Radio 4 dramatisation of I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. Um, I have never actually read this. I knew the story, but I'd never read it. <laughs> um, and I loved the BBC dramatisation. It's on BBC 4, um, BBC Radio 4, sorry. So if you ever want to listen to it, I think it's only like an hour and a half long or something. I loved it. Um, there's music and things, it, it adds in the ambiance to it. It's basically acting it out. Um, and I, I adored it. Um, the story itself, obviously Maya Angelou is amazing. I have, I think, the fourth and sixth of her collection. Um, so I want to make sure that I'm filling out the, the rest of them now. So now that I've listened to number one, I'm going to, to definitely get on to number two very soon. Um, but I really, I really did enjoy that. Um, next was White Fragility, Why It's So Hard For White People To Talk About Racism by Robin DiAngelo. Uh, now this one I thought was so cleverly pitched um, to the audience. So for, uh, written by a white person for white people on how we are so bad at talking about racism. Um, and obviously that comes with many exceptions, but uh, as a generalization, why it is so difficult for the white for white people within, um, um, this one is set in America, how white people in America don't want to talk about racism and how they immediately presume that because you've brought it up, you are attacking them. Uh, and I just thought that the concept of that um, and how the novel is based around that concept, concept is something that immediately calls it to attention. So I did really enjoy that. Um, and I would definitely recommend that. If you haven't listened, I, I listened to that on audiobook, as I said. Um, the narrator, uh, I think it's actually narrated by Robin D'Angelo as well. No, narrated by Amy Landon. Um, I, re I really did think that was useful to, to listen to it in a sense because you can get the tone behind what is being said. Um, so I, I did really like that one. Uh, and I actually think that was all of the books that I read. Hopefully I'll have put a little counter and Fingers crossed there are 31 there. Um, but that is all of the books that I read. Um, I think consensus is I probably won't read a book a day in any other month this year. Um, it was brilliant to get my TBR down. I think I've still got around 230 books on my TBR, which is ridiculous. Uh, but at the start of the year, it was, you know, 31 higher than that. 
28 higher than that. I bought more books. Um, I've actually bought more books than that. We won't talk about it. It's still high. <laughs> um, but I really did enjoy um, spending so much time reading, to be honest. It, it kind of made me put it into a structure. So I'd finish work, I would go for a long walk with, the, with my partner and the dog, and then I would spend a couple of hours reading, um, which a lot of the time, you know, sometimes I would pass that up for watching TV or something, especially in January where, you know, you're probably on a diet and all you want to do is eat. Um, so instead, picking up a book, I found that really helped me. Uh, so I would definitely recommend it if uh, if you haven't done so yourself um, or if you're not quite as mad as me. Um, but I definitely think it's worth it to get your TBR down a little bit. Um, but you probably don't take things in as much as you could and you do tend to favour the smaller books. Um, so maybe next month I'll do like half <laughs> the amount. Um, but I, I did really have a good time this month reading these. Uh, so now I have to try and take a, a picture, a thumbnail with all of these books. So wish me luck. <laughs> uh, so thank you for watching. I apologise that it is such a long video. Um, I am hoping, as, as I've said, this is a brand new channel for me, so I'm hoping to try and post as frequently as I can um, and tell you about all of the fantastic books that I'm reading, or more than likely, that I'm buying and just having on my shelves forever and not reading, because that's what I do. <laughs> cool. Um, so thank you all for watching and next time I'll definitely start by saying grab a cup of tea because it's, it's warranted. Uh, thank you all and if you haven't please subscribe, uh, I would really appreciate it. Um, and leave a comment on how many books that you read in the month of January, I'll be excited to find out.